Hello. Okay. Hello. Call is being recorded. Please disconnect if you don't want to be recorded. Yes, uh, we are recording. And let me tell you, though, it takes at least an hour and a half to process that recording when it's done. So um, I wouldn't expect it tonight. Tomorrow morning sometime. Okay. All right. Very good, Dan. Right on. Do you want us to just turn our mics off so you can't hear us? That's typically the best way to do it. It causes a little, um, you know, very little uh, background noise then. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And <laughs> Hi, Jackson. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and if you need me, then just start waving furiously, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah, we'll need to know sign language, you know. Okay. Um, Rex, are you there? Oh, he can't. I wonder if he can. So I I yeah, uh, Rex, Rex is here. I can hear you. I can oh, hear okay. you. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 All right. Well, um, this uh, we have this meeting here. Um, still under the prayer that we had together that everything that we do is uh, in the presence of Yah, and that we do these things because we want to be like him, we want to reflect him, and um, this is a, an important thing to share with, one, with each other, so that's what we're going to do. Jackson was the one who's, who asked, and then the, today or yesterday, I forget what it was, he said, hey, can other people come in here? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Um, now, here's what I'm going to do. Um, watch what I can do. I can share my screen. So um, here we go. And okay. Does everybody see my screen? Okay, very good, very good. Um, oh, good, Rex says yes. So he's texting, he's using the text um, the text uh, ability. Um, so the question is to explain or talk about the um, translation process. And it's one that, you know, that I made up because I don't really know other translators. So um, what I had to do was trial and error. And that's how I got what I have now. When I first started, I was doing everything on um, index cards. I just had a whole mess of index cards. And uh, that's how I was doing it. So I, I discovered that I was rewriting too many things, and so now here I am uh, with this method that I've come up with, and I don't know if it's the best method, but it's a method nonetheless. Um, one of the one of the things that I noticed with with Enoch, with the, with the translators, there was um, Charles. And then there was Dillman, and then there was um, Lawrence, and they all had portions of um, an original manuscript. So here's a here's an, a, ma a manuscript. Um, wait, is Brad with us? I think he can talk. Oh, I wonder if Brad wanted to be in this um I don't, i'm not sure but anyway um so what what you're looking at here is a picture of an actual manuscript so i have to go in here and uh you know look up these words one by one um and i have to type a lot of them so one of the things that i have is um here on, on my keyboard I'm, I think you can see all the way up there on my keyboard I've got a, a US keyboard a Hebrew keyboard and America America is um, 
uh, uh, the Gies lettering system. Um, here, I'll show you real quick. I can come in here and I can type. Um, here's the letter. This is like a, a D sound. Um, and here is uh, a Z sound. Uh, so I just I I use this this uh, specialized software to allow me to accomplish uh, these things. Now, why does that keep on popping up? Um, I have no idea. So we'll put it behind. Um, it wants to be on top. So I guess I wonder if Brad's here. All right. So now what I do is I, I look in this. This is the first book I go to. Um, I was originally using uh, uh, text from the Internet. There are some some geese text uh, in PDF form on the Internet right now. And you find differences. Sometimes they're not big differences, but sometimes they are very big differences. And I've found this geese, um it's very legible, and it, it makes sense. When, I, when you read one of these, uh, uh, books, it, may, it makes, it makes big sense. So, for example, um, this word right here, um, in the, in the, uh, internet text, it's simply that word right there. Oops. I wonder why, oh, mess. I'll keep that that up or down here, I guess. And uh, so in the Internet version of this book, you have the L sound and the Z sound. So what we have now is that. Now, in, in this case, in this, at this point, that's not a very big difference. Um, here is... Okay, so I guess somebody else just joined. And what we have now is this is where, remember, we did 72, which the, which was the calendar section. And this is still the calendar section, but it's chapter 73. So I just started working on this today. And you'll see here, this is the word that's in the, in the main text of the, the Enoch book that we saw here. Um, you can see it right here. It's the L sound, the Z sound, the N sound, and the T sound. And that's that word right there, Z N T. But this is what was in the Internet, this L Z sound. So I can literally just take that off. And they they both mean the same thing, but just spelled differently. That's all. So... Um, so that's what uh, I run into. Sometimes there's li very little difference. Um, let's see here. Now, here's these letters, these words in blue. Those letter, those letters were not even in the original in the um, the internet version of the software. So I included it in its appropriate position where it should be, actually, again, where it makes sense. So one of the problems with Charles and um, with Charles, all the, the previous uh, translators, you know, the whole list, Charles, Dillman, uh, Lawrence, and so forth, is none of them believed that this was divinely uh, inspired information. They believed that there were many um, uh, authors of Enoch, so they really didn't think this was something from Yahweh at all. So that affects the translation process. Depends on, on where you're coming from. If you think this is just a bunch of words that's, that's, that has no significance to mankind, you would see things differently. But if you believe 
that this is pertinent information to our lives. And this information has been basically uh, withheld from us uh, because this didn't all start happening until the 18, the early 1800s. Um, and then at that time, and, and scholars up, even up to this day, still write about when they, somebody writes an introduction, go on Amazon and you'll see there's 50 books of Enoch. And they all played, they all take this, this commonly, this common domain, uh, public domain information, and they just add uh, their version of an introduction. And that's how they make it their book. But, uh, so they really haven't, they, they really haven't done a translation. Um, so what I'm trying to do is what I had been given was an unction to do this. An unction saying, this is important information. Learn how to read these things. And, and um, also, I don't know if I mentioned to you, is I have... Um, I bought my, I, I, I tore my, my, my $200 book up and I have, uh, you know, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. I don't know if y'all can see those things, but I have the fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls for Enoch. And, um, the first 24 chapters in this book that I've uh, given to you guys has a, a an overlacing of translated Hebrew and translated Gies. So where the where the Hebrew had holes, I would fill them in with the geese. Um, for example, um, uh, chapter seventy four, uh, chapter seventy two had no Dead Sea Scrolls, but now that we come to seventy three, um, I do have a, a fairly complete uh, uh, text of the the Hebrew from in the in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So I'll. I will be, I have to hand type them, I have to hand type it out letter by letter all the way through. And then I have to look for similarities in order to do this interlacing. And it's, it's not that difficult because when you, when you, when you uh, translate the, these geese, it comes out really easily into, um, you know, interlacing them. Um, and, and I'm confident that the person who did this transcribing here did a very good job because so far what I found is the Dead Sea Scrolls that I've translated are, um, are just about the same words. I think I sent you a, a comparison sheet, J Jackson, a long time ago showing the interlacing uh, process and how they, they, they both do say the same thing. Um, I mean, sometimes the, 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 the names are, are, uh, spelled differently, but the, the message is the same. So that's, that has given me confidence, but it's this, it's this, this, uh, unction to, to do this. This, I mean, I'm, I'm not getting paid for it, so I'm not doing it, and I'm not getting a degree for this. Um, this, so I have a different, I have a different, um, motivation than most of the translators that I've seen so far. And my motivation is, 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 is reading the truth. What, what's, what's, what's the truth behind these words? What truth is there? And it, it started to, what it started, it started to concern me because, um, I started going, well, wait a minute, that's not what the original translators said when they translated these things. I said, well, why, why is what I'm doing so different? I mean, it's, it, it's the, the ands and the thises and those things are, they're always the same, but it's the, it's the other words, the, the substance of what's being said there, that's different. And I just had to start to, to trust that Father has put something in me that gives me the ability to do this, and um, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with it, um, with the with the with the method. <clears throat> Let me show you back here again. With uh, um, let's see. Oops, I'm still with my, my geese. 
keyboard. <laughs> I do that way too often. Okay. Um, here's what I do is I first I have a two inch thick dictionary. Well, I have a couple dictionaries. Um, here's uh, one that I have, and and I know uh, Jackson, you know the the Eisenberg Charles William Eisenberg. Uh, he's another. He was another um, uh, lexicographic uh, author. Um, so here's uh, yeah, this is Wolf, and then there's Eisenberg, and then also I have another one. But it, I don't use it. It's too small. It doesn't give. It doesn't have, doesn't have enough, enough words. This has got this big one here has got thousands of words. Oh, and we can't forget the Gesenius. It's full of of of, of uh, Hebrew words and the the equivalent Ethiopian uh, words too as well. It's amazing how many Gies words you can get out of this Hebrew uh, lexicon. Um, so here's here's what I do is I first I look up all these words and I write them down. And these Gies words are similar to uh, Hebrew in that um, here. Um, there's prefixes, so I, I go and I identify all the prefixes, and, and notice these are one-letter prefixes, and that's similar to Hebrew. And then I get I gather all the suffixes that I can find, and here in this format here, um, here I'll show you what I can do. I can come up in here and I can go like this, and I can say. I uh, search for that from the beginning. Ah, there's that word already right there. Um, same for any of these. So I go through a process of, of alphabetizing um, every word that I look up. I, I put into this uh, this sheet here. This, it's uh, 422 pages long now. And it, it helps me to um, say the word. Um, here's a Here's a prefix. And then the the body, the the root of the of the word, and it, it's just the way I do it. Okay. Um, so now, so I I, I confirm the word is, is spelled correctly, um, and then I put it into the, this document and I get it uh, get definitions on it, and then I. Um, Oh, here we go. Um, I take this and I copy this. Oh. I just copy the whole thing and put it right over here. And then I separate the words. So the Gies and, and, uh, and uh, Hebrew are similar in their sentence structure. Um, in this particular um, uh, verse, the subject is at the end, so I've got to bring it to the front. This is common in Gies. It, it, the, the subject is at the very, very end of the of the of the word, verse. So um, you know they, they just think that way. They think a little bit differently, and it's all a little bit like Spanish, you know, where they'll say instead of white house, they'll say house white. Uh, Casa Blanca. So it's a little bit like that as well. So, so what I do is I come in here and obviously, you know, I'm, I've prayed already. In the morning when I get up, Father, I cannot do this work without your hand. You want us to be successful in this and we thank you for this job that we have because without his arm, his strength, without, uh, the strength of Yahweh, I, I cannot do this work. So um, I basically come in here and whoops, and I just I I, I type this in. I, I think about what's the, what's the most logical thing here. Uh, 
and afterwards, or you could say then afterwards, or then thereafter, if, you know, it's all the permutations. You've got several there. And I just put, because I've been doing this for so long, I put the most logical one, then afterwards. All right, so the, you have to think of the subject that, of, of this area. Um, and I do this without peeking at what Charles and, and Lawrence did. Um, so I, I know that I'm getting this from unction of the Holy Spirit. All right, so then I go in here and I look at the next one. Um, with regard to, according to, of, towards, to the advantage, it could be any one of these things. Um, and also I have ors in here. Because a lot of these words, they have several meanings. Uh, it could be any, it could be this one, or it could be this one. Um, oh, here's another one. Or, so there's several things that, um, what happened? Okay. So I, I just, I just come in here and I, Try my best for a first go through and figure out what's going on with these words up here. So then you see here, then afterwards in regards to this, I type them out down here. Now, here's a case where the subject of this verse is that. I, I don't, I don't know why I know that, but I just know it's that. And I just start looking at it. Now, uh, Guise is poetic um, in that this right here, to see, it's not referring to seeing with your eyes. It's being able to see with your heart or or to understand. When, when you teach somebody something, and they see it, ah, I understand. So there are some of the other uh, things that you have to do when you're translating. You have to understand the way that the Ethiopians talk. So so what I did was I, I read several books on Ethiopian history. Um, I read poetry books, and how, so how they, how they think, you know, how they see things. And they don't see things like we do, like Western thinkers. Instead of saying, instead of saying to understand, they say to see. Okay. Um, and now this one right here, this, uh, this is a prefix and you can see it could be several things, order, command, rule, exercise, dominion, instruct an inferior, uh, uh, prescribe, make a will, or bequeath. Um, now, if you do look at 73 in uh, um, uh, Charles's version, he chose the word law. Well, it's it's not even in this list. Uh, and to me, a law is something different than all these things up in here. So I said, hmm, uh, for some reason, Charles wanted that word to be law because there are laws governing the, the order of things in the heavens. And... So I, I tried to make a sentence uh, using that at first. So a lot of this is, you know, I've only got one sentence over here that I finally came up with, but uh, it, it took several iterations going, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense, or something like that, I might say to myself. And a lot of times it's, uh, it's just simply unction. I, I, I've written stuff out, and then something draws me to something that just isn't right. I'm just drawn to that, and, and it gets solved that way. Now, again, there's in my heart, I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, why, 
girls say that way. And what I'm seeing here, why would he say, why would he say that? Um, again, he didn't believe this was divine. He, 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 he decided that some mysterious writer or writers uh, from parts unknown knew, uh, uh, parts unknown, could just put these things together. Put the, and how in the world can this whole thing, how in the world can this entire book Reference the 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 the, the work in the back. Uh, reference Revelations. Reference uh, reference uh, what David said. What re and reference what uh, Yahusha said and or was and it, it it's just way too fantastic for that for their conclusion to be true. So the, by the help of Yahusha. And, and the help of Holy Spirit, I'm moved to that and that and this. And um, I mean, if you read this in the way that it's, I have it here. Uh, then afterwards, in regard to this order, to see, to restrain this order with regard to the light lesser, which is named the moon. Well, already you can see here. That if I put if I put lesser right here, you see we got the lesser light. Oh, moon. Okay. So um, and oftentimes the end of the of the sentence is actually uh, the beginning of the sentence. So I can you know, take this here and I can uh, take that off and then put it right up in here on the front and we whoops I didn't get everything um, and this what I'm working in right here is just a plain everyday text editor it's not any specialized text uh, uh, word processing um, this other software I have over here in this window here um, this is called Melel software, and it's made in Israel, uh, designed in Israel, and um, it's designed special for um, uh, odd things. Uh, this one here can do Chinese, it can do Japanese, it can do, you, you name it, it, it can handle any font you want. You know, uh, uh, Hebrew is from left to right. Uh, Japanese is from top to bottom. So uh, it, it can do all of those things. It's, it's very nice software. Anyway, so you can see how this all builds. But then, you know, you get to uh, this word here, order. In regard, in regard to this order, so I started going, wait a minute, wait a minute. We just got done talking about the sun in 72. Well, wait a minute. How, order? What order? What, what law? What, what? Does it starts questioning? Well, how does, how does that word order fit into this situation? Um, so you have to, uh, just sit there and, 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 and think about it. And then you sit back and you pray, Father, what, what are you, what's going on here? What, what's happening? Uh, then you look up in here and you go, oh, that same word, order, in that line of definitions can also be exercise dominion. Oh, what does that remind you of? The sun. Well, the sun exercises dominion over the moon. Huh. Okay. So here's here's to get to the end. Here here's the here's what I came up with. Then thereafter, concerning the lesser light called the moon, in regard to understanding that the sun exercises dominion to restrain the entire solar system. Oh, I forgot about that. Sometimes when you're looking up words, you, you make a mistake. So you go, wait a minute, something's not right. Something's just not right here. Um, so you have to go back. Oh, is this word? It's 
one little three-letter word. You have to go back and look up these words again. This, uh, and this morning, this, this portion here that, that says has to do with the whole thing, all things involved, that wasn't there because I didn't read it carefully enough. And I didn't read the dictionaries ca careful enough. So, um, oh, you see here I've got Gesenius, and I also have Benner uh, references in here as well because they all speak of the they all speak of the same thing. But what I failed to realize uh, to add was that that word has to do with. Did I put it in the right spot? Oh, that word has to do with with. Uh, Things as a whole, restrain things as a whole, restrain. So I said, what what restrains things in a, as a whole? So I said, oh wait a minute, the sun has gravity, and what does the gravity do? It restrains the entire solar system. Being heliocentric, uh, the sun has that effect. It has it has it exercises dominion over. The, over the entire solar system. I don't know how to say the planets, uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, blah, 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 all the way out. But uh, um, so that's the basic, that's the basic um, uh, steps that I take. But now I don't include this into the book yet. Here's what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll, I'll grab this and, and I'll come here and I'll say um, I'll say 73.1 and then pop that in there. But when you're when you're that might be cool. This is just one sentence, but you've got the sentences above to consider. You got the, the set sentences coming up. So for example, this is going to be uh, 73. Uh, oops. So the next one is going to be 70. What is happening? Why am I? Having a problem, um, 73.2. So there's the next one right there. Oh, I'm still on my geese keyboard. All right. So I wait until I've uh, finished 73.2 and 70.3. I wait. I do. I'm going to do the entire chapter of 73, and then I'm going to go back and review all of my definition selections. I might go, oh, it, it, it really was rule instead of exercises dom domain. Uh, and I, I got I to gotta refigure it. But so I have to wait. I just don't go with the first thing. I have to go and read it back again and see if it, it's consistent. Um, does the idea presented in, in Chapter 72 go with 73? And does the sentence in 73.1 go with 73.2 and 73.4 and so on and so forth? Um, so that's that's the basic way thing I do. Sweetheart, you said something to me this morning, and it was brilliant. Oh, um, goodness. Oh, boy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think I already said it. I think it was that we don't do these things on our own. We, we do these things with his help, because these are the things. Oh, now I remember. Now I remember what we were talking about. Okay, well, here's huh? Father desires that these books are open. Yes. He desires truth is known. He desires to uh, reveal what the fallen watchers have uh, misinterpreted and misread, and put a little bit of truth and a little bit of falseness inside yes. what we have to. Um, study with and, and um yeah and, and it's, yes that's what we yeah but also we talked about there. um but yeah uh, thank you it, we talked about this morning um the word had okay um 
here's here's the in, the interesting thing about these Gies words and the Hebrew words. When you say ha or a, a union, um, oh. So you have that word, and uh, what we have is this, is think about the feeling of, of thirst. Okay. Think about the thirst. And when you are thirsty, oh, you are so thirsty, I need water. And you do everything you can to, to get a glass of water, and you drink it, and you drink it all until your, your thirst is quenched. That is the word had, because Father has a desire, like thirst, desire that's so strong, he wants to be one with us. That that thirst, that desire, I need you, I need Jackson, I need Peter, I need I need Sandra, I need all of y'all. Because without you, I am not one. So the the job of the of the of the translator is to how do I get all that on paper where it makes sense and that's also why I believe you can't have a, a one word to, for one word uh, translation I mean you can see you I can have the word uh, uh, then afterwards but some of these words are huge with their definitions. Um, a lot of feeling behind them, a lot of a lot of uh, action behind these words, like the word "had." It, it's 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 huge. Um, it don't if you're translating, don't let somebody criticize you for not for for having too many words. These words are important to us, and how do you explain something that's poetic? A feeling uh, that's into an you know, English because English is kind of like Greek or, or Latin. It's not. It's not poetic. We we say, um, oh, the man, but in Hebrew they'll say the tree. Uh, well, why is a why is a man? If you want me to think man, why are you saying tree? Oh, because a tree is sturdy, big, and strong, and it, uh, it has uh, longevity and uh, all that kind of stuff. Those are the types of things that when you're translating, you've got to work through the poeticness of these things. The imperativeness of translating correctly is that Father longs for us to have the truth of his word so that he says, say my word to me. Say my word to me so that I can move for you in the earth. And that's what, when we have his unadulterated word, we can speak to him and move mountains. So that's the the point in a yearning and the invitation is from Father. The invitation is from Father. The yearning, though, is the heart Father gives us to pursue an accurate translation so that we are empowered to speak father's words to him Mm -hmm. and he then can move in our behalf Mm -hmm. in complete uh, freedom without being um, disrailed or confused or whatever so that's that's the importance and we do have a promise that books will be open and so what we are seeing is these words that have been uh kept from us for so long for so so many ages are now being given to us because father requires that we are on the same page with him that that we are we have uh, access to the accuracy of what he has said so that we can we can work with he he can get the work done that he needs us to do to be a part Just, of yeah. you you hit it right on the head when it comes to translating <laughs> right on the head there is divine intervention there there sure is thank you well if it can 
Do you turn? Why don't you turn your speakers back on or or whatever? And then if you have questions, um, uh, let's let's go through questions now. Yes, it is a labor of love. <laughs> yeah, Peter. Uh, most definitely. My husband gets up at four o'clock in the morning, and he often works until between six and eight at night. And then while he's asleep, Father ministers to his soul, <laughs> and he gets uh, things, uh, information of things that he needs to relook at and yeah. re-examine, or he gets an explanation of something that he's been looking for. So it's, um, fortunately, we're both retired now, and fortunately, we have, uh, we're the only ones in the household, and we can uh, put this kind of effort into this uh, invitation that Father has given. He has, he, uh, Father always invites and then we either accept it or we don't. And uh, he said, though, for the translator that is accurate, there is great re reward. And what we see is that the reward is, again, the ability to speak Father's words to him, which gives us, gives Father, we have dominion of the earth, but Father gave us that and we have to speak back to him in order to get his resources at our behalf. There's a lot of things that work just like breathing that he keeps in total control on the earth because the angels have been assigned. But as far as humanity is concerned, Father has given us permission to do right or to do wrong. And so when, when there are those who do wrong, then Yeshua, the intercessor for mankind, we can say, Father, we need your help, and this is your word. Move in our behalf. That someone has had an assignment against them for harm, and you have promised to save them, preserve them. And that's, that's the reward. Sweetheart, would you read um, this portion right here? Uh, that I've outlined. This is from this is from chapter 104, uh, verses 11 to 13. Now this is Charles. Um, I haven't translated this one yet, but this is what we know at this moment. A warning to those who translate. But when those write down truthfully all my words in their languages, and do not change or take away anything from my words, but write them all down truthfully. All that I first testified concerning them, then I know another mystery, that books will be given to the righteous and the wise to become a cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom. To them will the books be given, and they will believe in them and rejoice over them. Then will all the righteous who have learned from them all the paths of uprightness be rewarded. Triple amen. Triple amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, and that, uh, I have a question about that. Very thing. Two, two questions. First question. There is that passage in, I think it's 103. I'm not sure. About the books coming out of the ground. I think you referred to that when you were talking. I I don't have your translation before me, but and I don't know if you got that far yet. But I would sure I like to see no. that well, translated from your manuscript. The rather place than the, the, the crap I'm hidden. using. The, and the second the thing. The place where the books have been hidden will be revealed. It'll be open like a grave. I believe that that's part of the whole opening up of the scrolls and uh, finding uh, parts of Enoch in there and also the, the the conspiracy to keep these things under wrap by certain church officials. Yep. The other thing is... Um, well, and Ethiopia. Ethiopia has... They have taken very seriously the mandate from Father to protect yeah. the original documents. But I believe as we pray for them to have mercy for us and compassion as father teaches love him love your neighbor love yourself and of course they've never seen us as a neighbor they've seen themselves as being completely alone but as we 
bring to Father our our cry to to have truth. He will deal with their hearts, and he will say, now is the time for the wisdom of this documentation to be released. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, are there, yeah, any, uh, are morning, there any words that you decided not to actually translate? Like I see you no. translated Yurok and uh, Shamesh and some of the ones that I probably left untranslated. Are there anything, uh, any ones that you left without? And then a second question. Oh, okay. I'm sorry I to keep asking question questions, now. but here the other one is the the speaking of about the um, the orbs in the air or even the Merkava. I I read in the lectionary that those things flying through the air were piloted orbs. In at least in Isaac's lectionary, would you care to comment on either of those questions? Sure, absolutely. The, on, the, the only words that I transliterated are names, names of people, okay? Um, they're different from what uh, uh, the original translators did, but um, I pretty much, well, I take that back. In the Hebrew, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, some of the names are similar to the Gies names, but I used the Hebrew instead. And for those, I was consistent through. But some of them are, are not in the Hebrew, but in the Gies only, so then I used the Gies pronunciations, which are, again, very, very similar. And also, um, when you're talking about the, the uh, Merkava, which is the um, chariot, yeah, I have a, in, I think it's in, in the version that I sent you all, um, there's, uh, in the journey section, I think it's in 33s and the 30s, somewhere around in there, uh, that talks very much about his journey and how he flew here and flew there. You can actually, I went on Google Earth and I have a little, I pinpointed where he went on this journey around. And, um, I'm, I don't know how to use Google Earth that, that well, but there's, apparently there's a way you can show up your journey through these, these places around the world. Um, for example, um, the research I did was um, he the very first place he went to was a place in India where there was much uh, of this and much of that. And so I went on the Internet and went, okay, sure enough, those things are there. Yeah, right there. And it's, it's right next to where – and they're in my footnotes. Um, you'd have to go and look at my footnotes in the journey section, and you can actually go on Google Earth and go, do, 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 do. okay, you're right there. Um, and also there's a place there where – uh, he landed the the uh, the the, the, um, the UFO. Basically, is what we're talking about. Uh, it's a UFO, and and uh, so he he went and he found and it was up in the upper upper lower portion of Vietnam or uh, Thailand, forget where it was exactly. But he stopped. He he landed because guess what? It was Sabbath. So he he stopped for Sabbath. While he's flying around in this in this uh, Merkaba, Merkaba is the Hebrew word for chariot, uh, transport system, transport system. But also, you'll notice what was the propulsion system, propulsion method for the chariots. Does anybody know? I forgot. <laughs> okay, it's the um, the cherubim, the horses. Yeah, okay. The, Cherubim or horses. Every time there's transportation, transportation needed from one place to another. Oh, look, the word cherubim is there. Oh, so Abraham went here to to see Lot and came back. Oh, why is the word cherubim there? It comes up way too often uh, um, when uh, when Enoch was uh, uh, translated. What was there? Cherubim. So. Enoch was very, very familiar with cherubim and transportation. And when Enoch went through the, the, the wormhole, whoop, whoop, okay. So, so, um, the, uh, yeah, the, the, the orb, the orb, what you're talking about is, in my understanding, is the word, um, uh, Merkaba. But it also there's a there's a uh, Gies word for it, and I'd have to look it up and find it. But uh, maybe some other time we can have a special class on Merkaba and, and wormholes and black holes too. Um, 
In, in fact, uh, when Enoch was down in Australia, remember that, you know that, think of Australia, the shape, and right in the middle there's a huge rock uh, that is um, out there in the middle. I don't remember the name of the rock. It's in the, it's in the notes. But he's right there in the middle of, of, of Australia seeing Australia. He was in Antarctica. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, in, in Antarctica, a glacier in Gies is River of Ice. I mean, it's, like, incredible. Uh, I would like you to consider about the orbs in air. I would like you to consider that that's protected thoughts sent from Father into the earth. Now, we know... We know that scripture tells us he reigns himself, his thoughts, the ideas that he releases from where he's at to where we are. He reigns on just and unjust. And there are many times that just people get an idea from Father, and it's a grand idea. But they don't have the inner motivation to carry it through. So whomever, many people, many people receive the thoughts that come from Father. Many people are offered uh, opportunity from Father to advance our technologies and so forth. But only those that have been given uh, the uh the Father gives it. He gives all gifts, talents, and callings. He get, he issues those when you're in the womb. But to those that have not yet confessed him as their Lord, uh, he gives many of the unrighteous or those who have not yet submitted their lives to Father, get the idea and run with it and cause it to come to fruition. And I think that's why many times we have in the court system, oh, I had that idea first. Well, yeah, you probably did. But you didn't put the finances together or you didn't put the idea down in blueprint. You didn't get it going. So forget it. <laughs> you, you didn't get the idea. I mean, you had it, but you didn't bring it to fulfillment. Are there any other questions about this uh, translation process? I was wondering um, what year this uh, the book was written in. Yes, was do, do you know what year it is from? The one well, here. yeah. Here's my best guess. Here's my best guess. Because of the similarities of the Hebrew language and the Ge'ez language, uh -huh. they were probably developed at the same time. Oh wow! Okay, and oh, wow. we read we read in um, in uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Remember when Sarah, Sarai, and Abram uh, had because of a drought they had to go down into Egypt. Okay, yeah. all right. And I here let me see if I can get it up here, and I so I can read it precisely. Um. I was just reading the, the, in the in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I came around across this jewel, and it's my belief that uh, the first Ethiopian was a friend of Abram, because the language is. I mean, Abram was such a unique fellow. He was from a, 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 a prestigious family. Um, he lived with with Noah. He lived with Shem and Eber. So they had they had their own language. And then the the you know Noah's family spread out and things went here and things got there. But there was an Ethiopian who knew Abram and probably spent many a day with him enough to where he could scribe I'm sure that father gave him the ability to do it to scribe what this Hebrew was saying the 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 geese people uh, the Ethiopians have a large history with I mean think of all the times uh, uh, 
Moses uh, was married an Ethiopian. Uh, there were all kinds of these. Um, and the Ethiopians uh, had people come down to meet Solomon. Um, and, there's, and there also is a belief by the um, uh, Ethiopians that the, the, the line of, Jews, of Jesus, the line of uh, Yahweh, was, not Yahweh, excuse me, Yeshua, was uh, an Ethiopian as well. Okay, so uh, here's, here's what I found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. That at the time when Abram and Sarai were in, G, were in Egypt in the house of Pharaoh, this is when they had come down, on account of my words, because he was considered a very wise person, and of my wife, because she, of her beauty, they gave to me many presents, expecting from me goodness, wisdom, and truth. So what did he do? I read to them the book of the words of Enoch. Oh, wow. So, so just another question. Recently, they have found um, among the Cherokee Nation the ten, a stone with the Ten Commandments. It's been buried. Yes. Do you think that uh, Enoch was able to transport those around? Um, and they just haven't been discovered yet. Do you think that's how it came to America and to the Chinese or to the Cherokee Nation? Or well, I, I already, yes, I, I know that answer to that question. Um, there's uh, one of the stones is in Los Lunas, um, New Mexico, and I have translated that, and it is the uh, the, ten, the Ten Commandments. But there's some some other things in there as well that. Uh, one of them, one of them said, uh, "Don't get a don't get a person drunk, and take advantage of them while they're drunk," uh, which I found very curious. Uh, there was another one about women uh, respecting women. Um, yeah, the, the, a lot of the problems, you know, that Noah Noah saw with his own eyes. The the fallen watchers were very uh, horrible to women. They were extremely horrible to women, and a lot of the things that the Watchers did to women in that time are still with us today. They're, yeah. they're still with us today. Uh, the disrespect. Uh, they would, they would uh, put fetters on them and then uh, do whatever they wanted. They'd kill them. They'd, they'd force them to do things that weren't proper. So um, and then, the um, Sandra, the, the Solomon had people going out and about in ships, big ships, looking for gold. A lot of the uh, – in India, I think they believe that's where Solomon's uh, gold was coming from. So they, they, they believe that he was able to, to, to go down through the Red Sea and go around, but also they came to America. They have proven it by metallurgy. Um, met, let's see, metal, metallurgy? What's the word? Yeah, the metals. Metallurgy. Yeah, they – yeah, they, yeah, metallurgy. They found that the the chemical composition of a lot of the copper coming from the Michigan area is right over there in uh, in, in in Israel, because they were showing how the how Solomon men came around. But there is also that point where they went around uh, Florida. They went up. Into uh, in the, the into the Gulf, and that's how the the Los Lunas rock. Yeah, Mexico. That's how the uh, Los Lunas rock gets got there. And if you notice, what what do the, what do the Cherokee men and women wear on their clothing? Fringes. Right. Right. So. They, uh, um, it just seems logical to me that uh, that Solomon or or some sort of Israelite was made their way into those areas and showed them everything they knew, and the Cherokee became like Hebrews. But uh, but that's what I know about Sandra. That one young man asked you where you were reading from on the oh uh, book, read out of the Book of Enoch. Thank you. Oh, oh, the reference here. oh this the reference? Okay, uh, okay. Where I was reading from was the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it was from uh, one 
Q-A-P-G-E-N-A-R. Um, that's a 10. It, it was when, from one of the scroll, one of the scrolls. 20, uh, what is that? That's 10 plus, oh, 20. Oh. It's in Roman numerals. I, I don't know how to read that <laughs> fast in Roman numerals. <laughs> <laughs> Google. Yeah, Translate. so where I was, where I was reading from was from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Where it said he would read from the, uh, the book of the words of Enoch. Is that, was that the question? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Jonathan, I'm sorry you, you didn't get in soon enough, but Jackson has recorded this uh, for everybody. Um, I guess he'll, it's got the video and everything, so that'll be fun. And, uh, um, yes, it is, Rex. Yes, yes. It, it, when I saw that, that, that reference, I said, what in the world? Hallelujah. This is interesting. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Somebody else is writing on. All right. Well, I'm I'm happy to do this again. If anybody wants to talk about it. Oh, um, excellent. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very, very welcome. You know, what's good about these things is it forces my wife and I to sit there and talk about this all day long. So, <laughs> Actually, we do anyway. So. <laughs> but, but this is kind of, it, it forces extra talk and, and extra uh, togetherness. And that's the beauty of this kind of a group situation. Is the, is, this is, this is what we love you awesome. guys. We love uh, you. Oh, can't wait we to, love you can't all. wait to see you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was only it was only a three hour drive. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna so keep that in mind. You know you've you've been a hermit for years. You've been hermit. Well, you know, I had to be. I had to be because um you know, Enoch Enoch secreted himself. He 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 secreted himself away to to to, uh, to receive instruction um and so forth and i guess i had to do that same thing without even thinking about it i didn't i didn't purposely <laughs> say oh i gotta no but in the beginning it, it sometimes it would take a week or two weeks to translate one verse yeah but with all the um the input that he's gotten from the translations, everything he's recorded and he can do research with and all the software and all the books and everything. He sometimes can do seven yeah. verses well, in a day. Yeah. I'm just thinking about what you just said, because I mean, I remember finding a word in the dictionary. I would find a word in the dictionary and go, sweetheart, I just found a word. <laughs> And now it's uh, now I can find you know thirty forty words in a day or in, like you were saying you know many verses so it just you get good at your craft I guess well better and to speak um, simplistically everything that's been put in him uh, is from Father's heart and mind because Father desires this to be done and we know that. Daniel's not the only one, but he is one that Father has uh, requested to do this, and it's a great honor. I can imagine, yes. Have you ever considered asking anyone else to help you? Um, oh, I, I have friends in Ethiopia, and I, they do help me because there are some words that I just cannot figure out, uh, and they're not in a dictionary. So um, I, I have, on occasion, uh, received some help from from them, um, and it's it's very helped. Yes, and I was gonna say I just made contact with a um, a, a council member, a councillor. It's somebody in the councillor in in uh, Addis Ababa from Britain, the British councillor who is trying to allow me to get the the people the, the 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 priests in these um they the the priests just don't let anybody 
see these books. You have to have a purpose. So I, I had to, I wrote him out, I wrote out for him this morning what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and what, and why, you know, why do I need to have special privilege to go into uh, one of these monasteries and um, see these books? So that just happened today. So. That's also, you know, in the, in the book that kind of, he could not make it into any of the monasteries. He made it to the island where they said that uh, they have to cover the sword, but they would only let no, him watch no this in certain places. So uh, my prayers are with you that you are able to cover the monasteries. Sandra, we didn't. It, it was too spiky when you were talking. I'm sorry. Uh, didn't really hear your question. Did anybody else hear it wasn't her? Wasn't a question. Just a statement. Uh, what I said was that uh, in the book, the Ark and the Covenant, and I'll send you that information. I knew I, I told you I would. But you oh. Need to get in to see uh, the books or perhaps the art, but they would not even let him in the door to any of the monasteries or anything like that. So I'm going to make sure that we all lift up prayers that uh, you're able to accomplish this. Is a, you know, Thank you. It's going to be hard, yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm just now starting to learn how to speak um, the geese. It's not, it's, not uh, it's not a used language. But the, the the people I know in, in Ethiopia are also helping me to to learn how to pronounce these words. The on YouTube I can wa- watch some of the priests speaking, but th- there's no really good explanation of how to do these things. But I'm, I'll get there. I'll get there in, in time and eventually. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Well, if that's it, Art. I want to. I want to talk to you, Art, uh, when you're when you're after we're done here. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, no, no, here, Art. Let's send him a PM. Oh, we can see. You can do it later. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Father. Well, we, for yeah, this we 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 thank we thank our heavenly Father for the things that we discussed this day, that he has shown us things that will help us to reflect him and to be more like him and to quench his thirst. He thirsts to have us reflect him. And we know how important all this is to him. It's like the meaning of the word lava. Uh, you desire with all your heart and you hang and you need, you need this. And this is what we're all about. And we thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you and goodbye, my brother. Sure appreciate uh, you coming on. It certainly it's not gonna be the last time now that you're pried out of your barnacle. <laughs> <laughs> All right there. All right. I'll get your recording Art, can you hear as me? soon as can... it's done. Okay. Art, can you hear me?